All right, everyone, it seems like every crappy Republican is endorsing Kamala Harris. We just got uh, Liz Cheney, of course, endorsing her. Um, so the daughter of somebody who was a complete warmonger, and I think his son actually uh, endorsed her as well. Bunch of Bushites, a uh, bunch of Romney staffers, uh, etc., have endorsed Kamala Harris. She is quite clearly the uniparty candidate. This is exactly what we don't want. The, the problem for decades was that the Republicans and the Democrats fundamentally agreed on many issues. That is, that the uniparty line was pretty homogenous. Um, Pro-war, pro-corporate tax cuts, anti-tax cuts for the middle class, of course. Um, and uh, against uh, free expression, against uh, the ability to defend oneself. This was basically the line uh, in the post-Reagan consensus, uh, which was unfortunate. Uh, you uh, remember, I made a video a few days ago about this. Uh, this is a bit of civic history. Ronald Reagan was an exceptionally, um, uh, exceptionally talented rhet rhetorician. He was good at being president. He wasn't always right, especially in his second term, but he was gifted. Uh, he was rhetorically skilled. Bill Clinton came along. Uh, Herbert Walker, of course, as VP at the time, was running for office, but he wasn't particularly rhetorically skilled. Then he puked on the Japanese prime minister. What uh, happened uh, civically is that Bill Clinton effectively stole the notes, uh, stole the homework of Ronald Reagan and said, look, I think I can make this work if I just take uh, his basic bottom line and then I add a little bit of welfare and a little bit of id poll, I, I can win. And he was right, by the way, at the time. He uh, stole Reagan's homework, he won election, he won re-election, um, and things generally went well, actually, under Clinton's tenure. Uh, not because of any uh, policies that he introduced, but because of the policies that were already in play at the time. And so he got to uh, sort of uh, steal the thunder, so to speak. Um, Kamala Harris uh, has, has basically attempted to do the same thing. Donald Trump's basic premise, that is, the things that he is champion, secure the border, um, do not defund the police, at the very least, you know, fund them generally speaking, um, and we should fuck our enemies, but we should be reluctant to fuck them is a winning platform. So what Kamala Harris has done is she's basically copied the homework. She's trying to pull a Clinton on, uh, on Donald Trump, actually. Uh, and I'm warning of this. It could be successful. I do not expect Kamala Harris to win the presidency. I think that she's gonna derp out at the debate and Donald Trump is going to absolutely fucking crush her. I also look at the polling and I say, okay, uh, Trump is running two and a half, three points ahead of where he was in 2016, and he won that election. I'm not terribly concerned, but I am concerned that they're trying to pull a Clinton maneuver. Um, that's clearly what's going on right now, and we have to be wary of that, uh, because it could be successful. Um, again, like what happened back in the early 1990s, you have a candidate who takes the, the opposing side. Uh, Reagan, of course, was a Republican. Bill Clinton was a Democrat. Takes the homework notes and says, well, you're getting good grades. I think that I'll just copy this. Uh, and then they, they campaign based on that. Every shitty Republican, though, is endorsing Kamala Harris. She's got the McCains. She's got the Liz, the Liz Cheney sort of thing. She's got the Romney and the Bushites. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a slurry of evil, actually, when you think about it. Um, I'm not surprised, by the way. I'm not surprised that these people who are so gung-ho for war would endorse the candidate who is quite clearly more likely to start a war. They're betting on, on basically, Kamala Harris to start World War III. Uh, they think that it'll be profitable. Um, it's really concerning, though, uh, in the end. I would rather not start a war. I would rather go with Donald Trump in his four years in tenure while he did not de-escalate every conflict that the United States was in. He did not start any new combat. That is the truth. 
Um, I, I condemn the one time that he did conduct a strike was in Syria with that air base, and I condemned that, uh, you'll remember at the time. I thought that it was unfortunate, it was unnecessary. I understood the uh, symbolic purpose of it, but at the same time, out of principle, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I, I can't support any sort of offensive strike that's not a direct response to something that's happened to our nation. So when Syria has not bombed our nation, um, no Syrian ever fucked me in the ass or anything like that, uh, I have to condemn it out of principle. Uh, that was the only blot on his foreign policy record. Generally speaking, though, Donald Trump was a peacemaker, and I'm hoping that he will be in a second term. Like, uh, look at uh, Korea, for example. He's the first U.S. president to set foot in North Korea. Um, there have been presidents who have gone to Korea before, but that was long ago. Um, they, they never stepped foot in the DPRK. Trump waltzes across, hugs Kim Jong-un, and shakes his hand and says, Oh, yeah, you know, uh, hi, friend. Apparently, uh, one of the uh, pieces of paper that were lifted from the Mar-a-Lago was a personal correspondence from Kim Jong-un. I'm wondering what it said. It's probably like, hello, friend. I'm very, very glad that uh, our countries uh, can uh, reach reproachment. I very much enjoyed having you here. Uh, you should come back soon, or something like that. It was probably something that was uh, characteristically East Asian, or something along those lines. Um, but Donald Trump generally, he, he didn't do the warmongering thing. This is something we haven't seen in a Republican for a long time. You remember, like, uh, the Bush Republicans, they were constantly haranguing for war. Iraq, Afghanistan, hey, there's an axis of evil. Maybe we'll bomb North Korea. Maybe we'll bomb Pakistan. Maybe we'll bomb Algeria. You see what uh, the Hillary Clinton regime did uh, when she was Secretary of State, uh, actually under Obama, uh, with Libya. Well, now you have like 200,000 human trafficked people uh, from this particular country. It did not improve life for these people. It did not help anyone. It didn't help U.S. interests in any meaningful manner. I don't even know exactly what the purpose was, but uh, I guess they just wanted to fuck more children or something like that. When Kamala Harris is getting the endorsement, therefore, of Liz Cheney, John McCain's family, uh, you know, uh, uh, fucking his, his son and so forth, the Bushites, um, it makes me nervous. Because I know that these people all love war, and they all love human trafficking, and they all love corruption. And they're all backing Kamala Harris. Well, what more proof do you need that this is the uniparty candidate? It's like there are still some people, like right-wing commentators, who say, well, do you, but Donald Trump said X, Y, and Z. Okay, look at the proof is in the pudding. Um, if one candidate is being backed by pretty much the entire uniparty, including people crossing the aisle, uh, that's pretty telling now, isn't it? Probably the other candidate, who's not being backed by the warmongers and the elite, um, is better uh, in nature. Probably they're better. Not necessarily, it's not certain, but there's a likelihood of that. Now, wouldn't you agree? And when they've got a track record, they were in office for four years, they didn't start any wars, they didn't do all of this retarded shit, uh, you would think that people would take notice of that. Uh, but there are a bunch of black pillars out there that are going to try to convince you otherwise. Uh, I would urge you to reject their message. Yes, indeed. When Liz Cheney endorses you, that does not necessarily turn me on to supporting you. And that's exactly what happened with Kamala Harris. That's about all. Peace out.